I really dislike high pressured sales campaigns. I hate sales campaigns that have these gimmicks try to trick you into something that give a false impression of a particular return as though with what you're doing there's a particular return on investment. I don't want that when I go to the store and I certainly don't want it and it's not appropriate when it's at church. We have turned giving into a, a campaign to where we want to either guilt people into giving or we want to pressure them into giving or we want to give them some sort of incentive into giving. In other words, give and you're going to get something back. And so I want to look at this. This is touted as one of the greatest examples or great example of why you should tithe. The Bible is clear. There is no command, or I should say it is clear. There is no command in the Bible where we are told to tithe. We just don't have that. We see uh, Jesus mention tithe about to the Pharisees. You tithe uh, mint and you tithe dill and cumin. But he's only speaking of what they're to do. And, and now understand, this is under the law where they are required to do so. After this, we see no other requirement, no other telling, no other pushing to tithe. What we do see is them being told not to compel someone to tithe. But let's look at this video and then you tell me if you don't get the same problem that I get. Have her come to me, Bobby. Have her come to me. Single mom uh, in between jobs. Come here. Come here. This is not embarrassing. I'm, I'm I'm going to show you something. Come here, if you come. Amen. 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 Sis, good morning. What's your first name? Constance. Constance, welcome. You a member of Alpha Tree? I just became a new member. You just became a new member. Oh, I love you. <laughs> Constance, it's not much, but I have 10 $1 bills. It's only $10, but I'm going to give you $10. Is that all right? You can, give me, you can give me what you owe me back. No, take the 10. All I want is one. All, that's all I want. And you can keep nine. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day, Constance. Wait, wait, Constance, Constance, Constance. I'm sorry. Since you gave me that back, I get 10 fives. Okay? Now, because you gave me one, I want to know, can I trust you to give me five? All I want is a $5 bill. 10 fives. It's all yours. All you got to do is give me one. I give you, two? you don't need it. I just want one. That's all I want. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. No, that's it. I want to be a blessing to you. Thank you, Constance. Amen. 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 Thank you. Hey, Constance. Come back here. Come here. Come here. No, come here. Come here. Because I trust you with fives, I've got 10 ten dollar bills here, right? And all I want is, can I ask you for one if I give you the other nine? All I want is one. It's a $10. That's all I want is one. So what he does is he gives a woman who is in between jobs uh, and gives her $10 bills. She's grateful. She gives one back. Okay, I understand the analogy that, that you're trying to portray. Then five. Then 10. Then 20s. 10 20s. It's pretty good. Then 10 50s. And now 10 $100 bills. And since we're going to finish up right... Because I can trust you, Jesus. and because you were willing to give the little that I asked, I got 10 $100 bills in here, and all I want is one, and you can have it all if you just give me one. Well, quite naturally, anyone in that position is going to give 10% there because you just gave them. 10 $100 bills, so I'll give that back. You gave me 10 $50 bills, so I'll give one of the 50s back. 10 20s, I'll give one of the 20s back. I get that. I personally feel like it, it's a little bit bad to kind of play on this person's situation. Just give this woman money. Don't make her uh, an object just to prove your point and before the people. Now, she's going to be grateful. I'm pretty sure she's grateful. But think about this. If that's the way that God actually works, then we've got a bit of a problem. I'll cover that in a little bit, but let's go over the scriptures. And what they tend to want to do is they, they, they go to a couple passages to kind of make it seem like that giving is 
some sort of investment scheme or not. I shouldn't say a scheme, but some sort of investment you give and God will give back. One of the passages that we turn to is Luke 638. Give and it will be given to you. They will pour into your lap a good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. For by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you in return. So the question is, is he speaking about money? Could this include money? Sure. But is this a promise that if you give, then God will give back to you monetarily? No, it's not. That is not the point of this passage at all. But that's how people are going to sell it. That if you give, God is going to give back. Not just God. Now, by the way, he says, and they will give back to you. Uh, put it back to the screen. They will get, they will pour into your lap good measure. So it's others that are going to do so, not necessarily God. But we, we build this. We sell this as though it's God that's going to do so. And there's a problem with that, though. There's a problem with that. Now, they also turn to Malachi 3. Again, we're talking about both of these examples are old covenant examples. But he says, uh, will, will a man rob God? Well, are you really robbing God? But then go to verse 10. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house and test me, or some verses, try me uh, and see, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows. Then I will rebuke the devourer. Now go to verse 12. All the nations will call you blessed, for you shall be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. Well, he's speaking about Israel. This delightful land is referring to Israel and the children thereof, not us. And again, this is under the old covenant. This is under the law. This is not for us. The problem that I have with this, there's a huge problem with what he's doing. See, when you tell someone, you'll find those that will sell you this, this bad doctrinal stance that... If you have faith, you can be healed of everything. If you have faith, you can call those things that are not as though they were, even though the scripture doesn't say that. But if, if none of these things don't happen, if you're not healed, if you're not blessed or anything like that, because of your, it's going to be because of your faith, I can point to your faith. The problem with this is that someone in the sales department or the marketing department or legal department to say, we shouldn't do this. You know why? Because I can tell for a fact, it's definite that I gave 10%. So if I'm going to give 10% and keep getting blessed, all of the people all throughout history that have always given 10% on command, feeling obligated, it's their duty. Why are so many of them still financially struggling? I mean, if it works just the same way that he says it works, then if you give, then I should get it back in return. But I haven't always gotten it back in return. Sure, God has, God has blessed me. God has sustained me. God has kept me breathing. God has filled me full of joy. Well, that's what you want to go for anyway. And that's not tied to your giving. Those people who aren't obligated to the tithe feel the same way and they haven't been given the tithe. What about those who are giving 8%? What about those who are giving 24%? What about those who are giving 12%? And they're doing so out of out of the abundance of their heart it's just because they want to. Uh, and they may not be getting back the financial blessings that uh, kind of comes with this investment that you're kind of portraying this as though that giving a tithe, there should be a rate of return, uh, return on investment with that. That's not how this works. Again, we can all look and see, man, I've been giving tithes all this time and I'm still, how many poor people give tithes and are still poor? They can look back and see, wait a second, what he's doing, this demonstration, this doesn't work. And so you almost make God out to be a liar. You are putting uh, undue burden of expectation on the people that the Bible doesn't say to do so. The Bible tells us that we should that he what he really wants is a cheerful giver, someone that gives out of love, out of joy, and not being done, not having to give, not grudgingly, but or under compulsion. God loves it when someone just gives out of the goodness of their heart. So if you want someone, and I've got a suggestion, if you are a pastor, if you're a leader, and you want someone to give more, and how they're gonna give is how God has purpose in their heart out of the abundance of their heart. Well, why don't you do this instead? Instead of trying to guilt them or make them seem like they're going to get a return on their investment, why don't you make them fall more in love with the Lord? Why don't you why don't you be part of that? Why don't you be part of that particular idea? Show them the word, share them the word, grow them in the word, have them to fall in love with the word. And maybe that will cause them to give more if you're so interested in doing that. I know that's harder. It takes work. That means you're going to actually have to fall in love with the word and push the word and preach the word and make folks see that you have a passion and a love for the word. That's harder than guilting someone. I get it. That's harder than giving some sort of little scheme or some sort of little uh, role playing deal or picking someone who's down on their, on, on their uh, fortunes right now and using them as an example 
and pulling on someone's heartstrings, that's easier than actually making them, causing them, giving them the word, having them to fall in love with the word like you did, because that would mean you would have to fall in love with the word. Do not listen to people with these little schemes, these little shenanigans, these little uh, skits. Don't do that. We don't see that in the Bible. And so what they're doing, what they're teaching, what they're preaching is without question unbiblical. You don't pay tithes. You give however you have been purposed, however it's been purposed in your heart. Out of love, if you want to give 27%, give 27%. If you desire, if you say, hey, you know what? I want to commit myself to giving 10%. That's fine also, as long as you're not doing it because you think the law tells you to or you're, it's a commandment. Because guess what? If you're going to keep that portion of the law, you have to keep the rest. And none of that's going to work out well for you. Amen.